Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leather Supply, and this is The Leather Element. If you've got a good question for us, or a good idea for a leather element, drop it in the comment box below. Also, if you want to know when our videos release, just click your notifications. You'll know exactly when these come out. So the Chicago screw, or the screw post, this is basically a threaded rivet. But in my opinion, it's one of the best fasteners we have in Leathercraft, and it's the best for a number of reasons. We can trade out hardware. We can make our projects adjustable. We can use these for strength or length or a big one, ease of application. We just need a screwdriver or an Allen wrench, and we'll talk about that. But these are a big help to our projects. Now, all kinds of little tricks and tips, and I'm going to do my best to cover every one of these. So let's step over here, start with some basic samples. We can really get creative with these screws, and we're going to talk about that. But the most common places we're going to see or use these, first and foremost, top of the list, we almost always see these on buckles. We can change out a buckle quickly and easily. In fact, fast enough to where we can, we can change a buckle depending on our mood or attire for the day. But also, somewhere down the line, we find a buckle with that nice polished nickel, some turquoise, drop that in, that belt is going to come together. So, for securing, quick in, quick out. Now, secondly, adjustment. This is a rifle sling. So therefore, I've got additional holes on the strap. Easy enough for someone who gets this or buys this to adjust that. On this end, strength. This is a rifle sling. I do not want this giving out. But right there with our screws in there, not worried about it. But also right here, I've got adjustment and strength. So yeah, killing two birds with one stone there. Now, I tend to like to add a small dab of glue to our screws. These can work out over a short amount of time. I don't want to weld these in, and we're going to see why here very shortly, but just a small dab of glue. And in fact, if I'm going to sell this or give this to someone, I will typically put this little tag on my screws. In fact, usually where, there is a, where there's an adjustment, but it just says, please add a dab of glue when the correct size is found. Now, in and out, we can absolutely use a screwdriver, and that's what typically works on Chicago screws. But at Weaver, yeah, it's Weaver. We can use an Allen wrench, and I love this because that's going to sit right in there. So I can quickly twist, or if I need some good torque, I can go with the other end, drop that in. But notice, too, it's staying. I find that often I'm trying to get a screw in in a, in a difficult position. That is the best thing in the world. In fact, I no longer use a screwdriver to drop these in. So we've got a good feel for the uses. Let's jump over and look at some finishes and lengths. For so long, our screws have been just like our threads. We had very few color choices. In fact, with our screws, we basically had nickel or brass. Good luck. Things have changed. And in fact, there's so much to say about these, I'm going to do my best not to forget anything. But right off the bat, finishes. Antique nickel. I use that finish on just about every project. I just love the look of that. But the antique copper is absolutely gorgeous and an antique brass. Now, we do have the solid brass, and then we have a nickel over brass polished. We've got a brown and a black and a coated. So if we want to go full on black, we can do it. Right here, the floral cap. This is absolutely my favorite, and I use this on most projects. Okay, length on these. We've got three lengths. We've got a quarter inch, a three eighths, and a half inch. So the quarter inch, that's going to be two eight to nines back to back. Now, let me back up because a quarter inch, if we want to knock two eight to nines or two four to fives back to back, to back that's going to be too much screw. Well, it's an easy fix, but also that opens up a creative avenue. We'll talk about that. So back over to our three eighths of an inch. That's going to do three eight to nines back to back and our half inch, four eight to nines back to back. Now, we can actually go a little bit further, and here's what I'm talking about. So there's our barrel, that's half inch long. Where our screw is almost a half inch too, it's about three eighths of an inch. So we really could get about three quarters of an inch in length on these. Now, our half inch, these are only gonna come in the plain cap. But again, like I said, I love the floral. So if we need to go with some length, but we want to use a, a shorter screw, we can always go to the hardware store. And I believe these are a number eight, but I think it's a number eight machine screw. And we can get these in any length we want. If we want a little more strength on the back, we can always add a washer. But here's one good point. So say I only have the three eighths or the quarter inch, but I need a longer screw. 
and I like the antique nickel, right? So the longer screw we can buy. But with this, let's take a board. I've got some holes drilled in this, and I believe they're 3 16 of an inch, maybe quarter inch. The point is my screws simply drop in here. I can hit those with some black spray paint with a paper towel or a rag, brush them off relatively quickly, and we're gonna get an antique nickel floral Chicago screw. And I love these, but also let's take that a step further. We can go with just about any spray paint color, yellow, green, or blue. And in fact, I just missed a great opportunity to use that trick on a project. Okay, so we've got a good feel for links, for painting our caps, and for finishes. Let's jump over to our main table. We're gonna look at just a couple of simple tricks that are gonna help us with these. If we're working with a lighter weight leather and we want to use our screws simply for, say, decoration or adjustment or replacement, they're going to be a little too long. This is our four to five ounce pull up, one of my favorite leathers. But when I do a bend back on this or, say, two plies, that's going to be too short. I'm at about an eighth of an inch. Our smallest screw is a quarter of an inch. So let's just make some donuts. Let's fill up that space. And in fact, if I bought that product and saw that, my first thought would be, Someone went to the trouble to do it right. They did not cut corners. Nice touch. Now, we could drop these in between. We'd never see them. Not really my favorite way to go, but that would give our, our keeper a little room for movement. But with the donuts, first off, yeah, we could chew up some good scrap with this. But when I make one, I might as well make four or five, keep those in stock so they're ready to go when I need them. But also, we can use our screws for decoration. Now, we've got the same problem there. So let's just drop in some washers or donuts behind that. It's gonna work nicely, a good touch. But at the same time, like many leather craft steps, let's take a utility step and turn it into a creative option. So right there, how about we flip that washer to the front? We add some color. Right there, a smaller splash of color. That's our English bridal. It's a burgundy, kind of a mahogany color, but that's just a little bit of color there. So there's all kinds of creative ways we can go. Let's take that a step further. This is a half inch round hole. Now it's not a punch that we commonly use. In fact, the only thing I use this for is donuts. But if we don't have one of these, we can absolutely go to town on the creative side. We could cut all manner of shapes and sizes to add decoration to our belt. Now the hole punch in the middle, 3 16 maybe a quarter of an inch. This keeps a 3 16 keeps that screw a little bit snug in that hole. To me, that's going to give us a good bite and a secure fit. One more. Now, with the crane and sling folks, they use wear pads. We could always drop in a wear pad, say on a part of a strap that's going to get a lot of wear, so therefore easily replaceable. But, and we've all done this, we get this beautiful project ready to go, we're going to drop in a letter stamp, we get one upside down or crooked. Yeah, crushes our world. So how about we do this? Let's take this smaller piece. Let's get our project complete. But on this piece, let's drop in our letter stamps or whatever. If we mess it up, we toss it, we do it again. We don't destroy the project. But let's take that, drop that on. Now we could go with rivets on that, but I like the color and the shape of the screws. Let's drop that on the front. That is gonna be a very professional touch. Okay, one more step. Once these are in and we need to get them out, let's see how to do that. If we're using our screws just for strength, we can use the strongest glue we can find, absolutely. But if we need to adjust or trade out, I tend to like to go with just a dab of white glue. We talked about this, and we really don't need much. I'm just gonna drop some on my finger. That's really all we need, because we're simply tacking these in so they don't work themselves out. But when we need to, when we need to take one of these out, it's relatively easy. Now, this is a white glue sometime back. I'm gonna take my Allen wrench. Now, right here, we've got a block, just so I don't crush my keeper, and this remains relatively even. But I'm gonna drop my, my Allen wrench in, and I'm gonna give that a real fast turn. There we go. In fact, on that, I could, could not have planned that to happen on camera, but I felt that glue give in there. So now all I have to do is unscrew that, and the screw comes right back out. Now, we can press down on this if we need a little more, say a little more torque. Also a screwdriver or a, a, a drill, because that's got a quick start on it. That'll pop those right out. Now, if they get in there and they get a little bit sticky, this is where it can get a little tricky. One thing that we can do, 
right here, I've taken a drill and I've just drilled into the cap. I'm not trying to drill through this. That's going to be a disaster, speaking from experience there. But what I'm going to do is drill in and say a quarter inch bit, give or take, but that's going to give that a jagged, kind of a ragged edge. So now when I press down on the project, most likely I can get that to break free. If that doesn't work, yeah, again, from experience, if that doesn't work, what I can do is from the front of the project, and I want to be careful, I don't want to, I don't want to destroy my project. That's part of what we're doing here, is if I can press that up just enough to where I can get my vice grip on that, good. Now I can hold that while I back off on the screw. Okay, if that doesn't work, yeah, there's, there's one more step. If that doesn't work, I'm still going to still gonna drill this out. But what I'm going to do is because this is going to be our rough side, our cap, I'm going to put a piece of leather against my screw or next to my screw on the back, and I'm going to use channel locks or if I need to, my vice grips, and I'm going to hold the cap of that screw down. Again, that drilled out spot's going to aid me there, but I'm going to hold that down. Now I can back that out. Chances are about 99% of the times that's going to work for you. So relatively easy to back these out as long as we use a white glue. But if we have to go further, well, hopefully there's at least a couple of tricks or tips. But all told, I love the Chicago screws or the screw posts. Big help to me with my projects. The lowly screw post. Well, evidently not. 12 minutes later, there are all kinds of things we can do on the utility and the creative side with these. They're a big help to me in my shop. Now, we can't finish this video out without talking about this. Why are they called Chicago screws? I am sorry to tell you, I cannot find that out. I've been to the top of the fastener industry, and I've been to the top of the leather craft industry. I have not found a single person that can tell me this. But as things go, these were probably delivered in a box that said Chicago screw manufacturing or whatever. They simply became Chicago screws. But all told, I hope this is good information for you. I hope you pick up some of the screws, and I hope they work as well for you as they do for me. Thanks for taking time to watch The Leather Element. Good luck with your projects.